bad. Man, just look at him. <laughs> What's up? I mean, why can't he be like everybody else? Why he gotta be different? <laughs> I don't know, man. Just look at him. Look at him. Just look at him, man. Yeah, I see him. I see him. Oh my, oh my, oh my God. I've been running on my life. They keep judging on my life, but I'm just trying to live my life. Oh my, oh my, oh my God. I've been running on my life. They keep I'm just trying to live my life. Y'all keep judging and judging and judging me. Ain't they wonder you could be your better me? Y'all wanna see me in a white gown with wings? Act so heavily. Fuck your opinions. Fuck your opinions. They don't matter. They don't bother me. I just do me. I stay true to me. I'm a shine to y'all like jewelry. Oh shit. Y'all tripping. Hi. My name is Emmanuel Ekwamwaku. Popularly known as Croc. Founder and CEO of Clock with Brand. Co founder of Snipers Basketball Academy. Brand ambassador Swift Hoops by Delic Swift. Ex captain and starting guard for KNUST basketball team and KSCS basketball team. Two time MVP Ripper Bounce, two time MVP Sprites Ball Eastern Region, current MVP Kumasi Basketball League. And oh, my right leg is shorter than my left leg. When I had an ass, it took a long time for me to have PK. So I had to go through a lot of treatment because I really wanted to have another child. In fact, I was told I, I, I could never have a child anymore. And you know, a woman always wants to have more children, most women. So I was really trying. My husband tried a lot. I was seeing my gynecologist who happened to be my uncle. He really tried for me to, to be pregnant. Anytime we tried, miscarriage pops in and then I get a bit sad. After trying for, for some time, he came. And I was very happy. I remember my, my, the lab test that confirmed I was pregnant. I came home jumping and you wouldn't believe it, I had a party for children. <laughs> I gave birth to PK. In police hospital, I was the happiest person on earth. In fact, there was nothing wrong with him, honestly. I never knew that midwives do take measurements of babies until that day. This midwife took a tape, measured the circumference of, of the head, measured everything. I was shocked. I never knew they did that. That very day, I was discharged because there was nothing wrong with both of us. We went home. Everything was normal until one day, anytime I was trying to dress him, I bath, bath him and then later I would play with him all the time. He was such a, such a joy. So I would just hold his legs together and be jumping and turning him around. When he was about three months old, I, I, I did the same thing, try to dress him up on the mat and then trying to hold the two legs together, um, I realized that it, it, it didn't look right. It didn't look right. So I tried again. I kept it to myself and I said, no, this is, this is not true because it, it hasn't been like, it hasn't been, it hasn't been like this. Then I would try it again. I, I realized the difference between the two a little bit different. So I, I told my husband and he said, um, are you sure? I said, yes. Okay, let's see. So everybody, we, we, we were trying to check whether it was right or maybe I was just, it was just something that is playing on my mind. I don't know. So my, my husband said, okay, take him back to your uncle. So we went back to the hospital. My doctor said, no, um, we have to see the specialist because he was a guy named. So immediately he booked me to see the orthopedic section in um, Kolebu. So we started Kolebu from there after when he was about three months. And the story began from there. My childhood was, um, I'm not sure I can find a word for my childhood. It was a bit fun but very tough because the point I realized how I looked, I mean physically, and how I walked and how my friends had to remind me every time 
it was tough because I didn't like it. And I couldn't show it so much because I wanted to play. I wish it could be different. I mean, everything anybody goes through either makes or breaks them. I know mine made me, but I wish it could be different. There was once children were playing around the house and he was there as usual. And then I was in the kitchen. I could hear from the kitchen window, the children, they were playing Mebansa Tiso, Nipansa, that sort of, you know, that game. Little, little children. And then when I suspected that when it was Parkour's turn, they said, Nani Naina Kakakra. My goodness. I wept in the kitchen like a baby that has been smacked. I was not there, but the moment I heard, Nani Naina Kakakra, Nani. After weeping, I went to see him. There he was sitting among the children, stretched his legs. I said, oh, so it was Paco. I went and brought him in, but I always make sure he never sees me crying over his challenges. I, I made sure he never saw me crying. When he was growing up, let's say five, six, seven, eight, growing up primary school, I would ask him, how do you feel if you go to school? Everyone loves me, mom. I'm happy. But one day, when I was taking him to school, I asked him, how do you feel about yourself? He never said anything, but he bowed his head. When he lifted his head, I saw tears. <laughs> Yes. Primary school, toughest period of my life. It gets tough while, you know, moving to the next stage. It got tougher. In class one, I was in Madonna school in Asylum Down. Before Madonna school, I was in Dion's Stairs. But in Dion's Stairs, I, I don't even remember having a limp in Dion's Stairs. Because it was fun. It was all play, all play. All my teachers loved me. Every day playing. But in Madonna, I had some kind of friends who thought they knew, you know, so they could give me a name. I had no name when I was in class one, class two. It was all echo, you know. And then I got to class four. I started meeting people who came from all walks of life, if I should put it that way. Because they, sh they, they, they show it, you know? They show that my father has money. Um, I know what I'm talking about. I can tease you, you know? The actual challenge started in class five. In class five, I have to change schools from Madonna. I did one year in Anselm Preetry the, should I say, recognition of my limp was quite loud. And well, I was a bit confident in answer poetry. You know, I was all over the place. I was playing soccer. I was playing everything that the school had, you know. But there was no basketball court. So it was mostly soccer. I didn't give anybody the chance to regard me, you know, relating to my leg. So everybody kind of respected me in answer poetry. They, they, they didn't have a reason to tease me because I acted as if, you know, I knew, I knew my worth, I knew me. So you can't come and tell me like, you're this, you're that, you know. And then my mom had to travel. A time came in my life when I had to travel because um, marriage problems came in and after some years I had to remarry. And then I had to join my husband. So I had to leave them behind. So that after um, settling, settling down and after everything is okay with me, my status is okay, then we could bring them over to join us. 
Yeah. And um, sometimes when you are back home, you, you you hear things and see things differently. As if it's, 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 it's all roses. Everything is on a silver platter. As soon as you come, everything will be okay within one year, two years, or then you can bring your children or whatever, relatives. But once you get in, you realize that, no, there's more to it than we think. When I was coming, I sent him to a boarding school. First of all, I went to Achimota. They said there was there was no vacancy. I went with him. And he's the type that, though he was small, he's a very positive person, so optimistic. When we went to Achimota, he knew he was going to get Achimota. But a friend, it was a friend who told me to bring him and that they were going to take him. So when we went, in fact, the headmistress um, said there was no vacancy. So I told the, the teacher friend over there, said, look, go to St. John's immediately from Achimota straight to St. John's. So when we went, everything was fine. They said I should, they, they gave me uh, the perspectives, everything. So I made sure before I left, the Saturday before I left, I packed everything. I bought everything he needed for school and sent him to St. John's Achimota. St. John's was the problem. I, I'm not sure, you see, I am saying this now, and then all that I went through made me strong. But I don't want to go through it again. Nobody ever wants to go through that. St. John's was a good school. Boarding school for class one. They have kids, babies in boarding school. I started in class six over there. The very next day, I was given a name. That's Atsimi Enu. <laughs> Atsimi Enu wasn't because of my leg. It's because I made a mistake with a word. I was supposed to say Atre in Chi. And I'm a Fanti. And in Fanti, we say Atre. And they were all Chi guys. So they had Atre in so they just, that was it. The actual problem started with two guys. Twins. <laughs> oh God. They found pleasure in teasing me. That up till now, I don't understand. They, it wasn't their job. They didn't make it their job. But every single day when they meet me, they have to tease me. Monday trip. They have to tease me. Oh, it was tough. It was so tough. I, I complained to my sister every time. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I felt she didn't believe it. Or even if she did, she thought it's part of school life. I didn't like it. And apart from Atsimi, you know, that's the made it sound as if it's because of my leg that I got that name. Though they'll explain it to people sometimes. They give me other names like Pulele. I don't know if you remember Terrible Chaka. You know, the Pulele song, he raised his leg. Good. They give me a name like that. Even when Atsimi was so popular. They made songs for me to tease me. Jesus, every day, every single day. And I was so sad, I was so angry. I needed a way to make them stop. So I had to do something. I mean, how else am I going to stop an armed robber from robbing my family house? If I'm a part of them, if I'm a part of them, won't rob my house. Do you get it? Be a part of the robbers, don't rob your house. So I have to be a part of them. Whatever they do, I need to figure out how I'm going to do something. That was the problem. I shouldn't have felt as if I needed to be a part of the things that I didn't feel like being a part of to feel good about myself. But that was the only way out. 
If I think about it, if I had another chance, I'd do the same thing. That period was hard. So tough. The period I cried the most. The period I complained the most. The period I maybe was rejected the most. It was later on that I heard that there was a problem in the school, that um, he had jumped over a wall with some friends and gone out of school. And in fact, I was so sad. I was so cross. I cried that day on the phone. The why? Why would he do that? Knowing how, knowing his condition, you know, taking his condition into consideration, why would he even jump over a wall with friends? Apparently, the story wasn't like that. But, you know, as a child, I think he should be left alone to, to also be, be truant once in a while. I'm not, I'm not supporting, I wasn't supporting him. I was sad, I didn't like what he did. But I come to, later I said, oh, he's a normal human being. Why do I have to think that he should be perfect? He shouldn't have to, no, I don't have to do that. He's a normal teenager at that time. He was a normal teenager growing up. We like to experiment, we like to explore. So um, I think he's not a saint. And I love him the way he is. I have an amazing family. I'm the only one in the family with a limp. So it's not like they had a manual on how to raise a kid like me. I can blame them for a lot of things. But they were there. My mom and my dad got divorced. So my mom left with us, me and my big sister, so. Basically, from six years old till my mom had to leave the country, it was me, my mom, and my sis. And after 11 years old, I had to live with my sis and my sister's husband right now. But then her boyfriend, amazing human being, he is literally my father, <laughs> took care of me so much. Clark, I don't know if I should say it's my son or my brother-in-law. When the mother made up mind was going to relocate, they took him to a boarding school. And the idea was that from the boarding school, you go to either the grandmother or the uncle. And I made up my mind, I'll go visit him at least every, every other weekend, provided I'm in town. So one weekend I went for him and we sat down. We got into chat and I said, look, what stopped you from coming to live with me? And he went like, oh, how come? So I, so I spoke to the mom, when, if school vacates, I want to come. I want to go and bring him home. So that's where I started. He living with me. This is what I can say about my big sister and Mr. Say. Mr. Say was, ever since I've known him, has been mature. He is amazing. I don't know how he does it, but he taught me a lot living with him. Now, my big sister was probably 22 or 21. Had no idea of how to raise an 11-year-old boy, stubborn boy. She was amazing. She had to do it all by herself with her boyfriend then because they, they were married. I know it was tough for her because she had to make decisions. She had to go to school herself, look after her kid brother, who's very stubborn, and do a lot of things to make sure this boy has a better life. Because she can't screw up, you know? My mom trusted her. My mom was still there, my mom was still, you know, in communication. My big sister, had no idea what was happening to me. The kids in the area when playing at a point in time, um, the attention goes to him because of his leg. So they start mocking him. I didn't know. Sometimes he used to quell. So being there, he doesn't want to go out. So asking him, my husband asked him, he says there's nothing wrong. 
It took a very long time for him to open up. One time he told me, Mr. Vera, you know what? This is how I feel. And when he said that, I never questioned him about certain things anymore in my life. I left him. All that we did was to pray for him. And sometimes I didn't understand him. Because a young girl raising a boy, it's not easy. Mom is not here. But thank God, God gave us my husband. And along the, along the line, he can't sing. We tell you, leave him. He said, he's a young man growing. But I didn't know what to do sometimes. So um, sometimes I flare up. And he would tell me, take it easy with him. He will, so he will come along. Life with my big sister wasn't you know, all rosy. And, but she did a good job. She did a very good job. And she is my MVP. PK's journey thus far, it has not been very smooth. It has not been very smooth because, not because we've been away, but he's been in good hands, but because of society. He once told me because of society cruelty and society abuse, emotional abuse and other things. So it's not been easy, but as to how he was able to pull through to come this far, I, I don't know how he did it. Right before I went to uh... KSTS, Kofudia Secondary Technical School. Um, I was given so many names, of course. And I went through a lot of things, you know, fitting in and blah, blah, blah. So I had to tell myself that it's going to happen again. It's not going to stop. There is no way I'm going to another level of my life and I'm going to meet young guys and they're not going to give me a name to tease me. I, want, I psyched my mind to make that, to, that that was going to happen. So I told myself that um, whichever stage I get to, whichever next name that comes up, I mean, whichever name that was given to me, I don't care. I'm done with this level. I'm going to my next level. But whichever next name I get, I'm going to embrace it. And I'm going to make it something good. I mean, that's what I told myself. I didn't know if I, if I was going to be able to do it. But that's what I told myself. So then I went to KSTS. Two nights in school, my school father sent me to fetch water for him in a bottle. I went to the, uh, the tap to fetch it. It was evening around 7.30. And I met this, um, I knew he was a senior because he was wearing trousers in our school. When you get to SS3, you wear trousers. So I got to know he's a senior and he asked me, he called my name. He actually said, you be there, call boy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the call. Like, you, you are the one who plays the basketball. Like, yeah, I'm the one. When I meet you, I will call you clock, you hear? Like, clock. I know the bar, why you will call me clock? I say when I meet you, I will call you clock. Okay, but why you will call me clock? If I, if, if I call you, make no response, I will ask you. Okay. So I went back to the room. It was like clock, clock. Doesn't make sense. So I went back to the room. I gave the bottle to my the bottle of water to my school father. And I told him that I met this senior who says you call me clock. And he laughed. Like, ah, why did he laugh? <laughs> but he didn't tell me. And he said it out loud, you know, louder to his friends in the room that Charlie can't say something and impeach him. The boy go to the tap, somebody give her a name. Like, what be the name? He <laughs> say, name me clock. They all started laughing. I didn't understand, but I also laughed at them, you know, like, okay. Just the next day, everybody was calling me clock. Like, from the room, to the hall, to the school. Everybody was calling me clock. I didn't understand, but I accepted it. 
and I didn't accept it because I had told myself that I'll accept every name. I didn't know what the name meant. So, I think a week and a half or two weeks, I was talking to my school father. I was like, do you even know the meaning of your name? The name everybody's calling you? Like, nah. I mean, I told you, you just laughed. And he explained it to me about the um, hour minder and the minute minder, one short, one log. So, my leg. I remember I cried. I felt weird. First of all, because I felt dumb. Very dumb. Why? How did you even think of this? I cried. I really cried. And I think I cried for a day or two. Sad that even though I told myself that the next level I get, I will embrace whichever name that is tagged on me. I was hoping that I won't get another name like that. I was hoping that I'll get a name that told how sharp I am in basketball or anything. But then I had to tell myself again. I had to retell myself that, yo, you told yourself every level you get, every name you get, you embrace it. So why are you crying? Why, what are you crying for? So, I mean, that was hard to take though. Telling myself that. But I had to. I had to recite myself and then figure out why I love this name. I mean, Clock is a cool name. Clock. It is a cool name. A weird name for a human being, but a cool name. So that evening, I sat down, I drew the clock, and I made my own meaning out of the clock. I, first of all, accepted the meaning of the minute and the hour minder, you know, indicating my legs. That was my first meaning, and I embraced it and accepted it. And I added meanings to it. About the clock going all round and not stopping till the battery dies or till it is stopped. I will do everything I lay my hands on the best I can and make sure I excel in it unless I die by God forbid or unless I am stopped by something I can't force time Dr. Lanyo Kuma told me we can do something about it so we'll fix a date for the correction yeah we've seen the difference we had to go to clinic even until he was about four years after they told me they couldn't do that because anytime this guy comes to clinic he was so active. He, he wouldn't like you to restrict him. With the boy, he has to, you have to leave him alone to play around, even in the clinic, in the hospital. Even when you pull him, he will come back before you realize he's gone with the ball. And people will be watching. Wow, this guy. The doctors on that day, they fixed another appointment for us to come for correction. So I was happy. I thought they were going to do it for my boy to be okay. Everything will be equal, same length of flames. We went there and this boy started playing with the ball again. So the doctors called me and said, we've seen this guy, he's so active. And it looks as if he likes ball, football. At that time it was football. We think, we the doctors have sat down, we've had a meeting and then we've thought about it that we should leave him the way he is. Because the moment we touch him, he will not be as active as he is now. He will be restricted. And I don't think we would have done him any good. So um, we think we have to leave him the way he is. I played everything. Um, Putting alikutu, and I was good at all of them. <laughs> Everything, pampana, stay. I mean, those who grew up <laughs> locally will understand these games. I did everything, and soccer was easily accessible. Because as soon as you get out of the house, everybody's playing soccer. You know, so I can't be doing any other thing alone. I didn't like playing alone. I want to play with people. Playing any other thing made me feel good. 
the fact that I am playing and I'm happy playing and I don't have to sit down and have a discussion with somebody or talk about something with a friend for me to be teased because every time if we're in a circle and we are talking about any other thing at a point my name will come up as a topic and I have to be teased and I have to cry and I have to leave and playing soccer was easier because there will be no discussion it's just you passing me the ball me passing you the ball it's one scoring one losing get out of here so um, it was it was easier you know and I just wanted to play so soccer was available so I just fell in love with it I didn't mind being teased if you're going to allow me to play I just wanted to play so whatever you want to call me if it's off the the soccer pitch then I have a problem because I have nothing to take my mind off it but then if I'm being teased on a soccer pitch I have soccer or whatever we are playing whether it's pampana, pilulu, whatever then I can take my mind off it for a long period of time till time is up to go home and then I don't have to respond to you again but then if it's off playing and you're teasing me I, I'm focusing on you I have nothing to take my mind off it so I didn't mind you teasing me on the soccer pitch or while you're playing because I had, I had the game that we were playing to take my mind off what you're, what you're doing so it was quite easier if I were playing and you were teasing me than not doing anything and then you're teasing me. I, I played a lot, a lot of sports. I was a part of a lot of activities. But when it got to basketball, I, I'm not sure I can explain, but it was different. I, I could do more. Let me say that. I could do more in basketball without being sidelined. You know? In soccer... They will always tell me I'll get injured because I'm playing the ball with my legs. But in basketball, okay, I'm running with my legs, but most of the action is going to be happening, happening with the hand and all that. And I think I grew more confident when I got to the stage where I accepted basketball. So I, I, I didn't accept anybody trying to tell me what to do or trying to put me aside. I was still pushed through. I think it's the convenience and the fact that I got to the point where I could speak for myself. And basketball was just, I just fell in love with it. I had this friend called Muriel Corte. We met on a school together. Her father was a very good carpenter. I used to visit her almost all the time. And um, one day, her father asked us to go out and play small, because we are always indoors, playing video games or watching TV. So we went out to play, and there was soccer available, you know. Moral had a kid brother, so we were playing soccer together. Like, Moral asked me, do you play basketball? I want to play basketball, let's not play soccer. She couldn't play soccer, so. It was a soccer ball, but we had to bounce and fake it, like, it's a basketball. I didn't know what I was doing. We already know what we're doing, <laughs> but we know that basketball, you have to bounce it, so we just bounce the ball around, and from there, I started seeing basketball around. You know, some, some of the old men coming around holding the basketball as they're going to play somewhere. I started seeing basketball on TV a lot, but I didn't have the chance to try it because I didn't have anywhere to play, you know. When we moved to North Kanishi, my mom had to work at North Kanishi. We actually moved to live in Jowulu. My mom had to work in North Kanishi. There was this flat called CND Flat. That was where basketball began. When I played my first basketball game in high school, the name clock changed from the guy who limps and plays to the guy who plays. But it wasn't enough for me. I didn't feel it was enough for me because it was just not enough. I just needed it to be more. I just needed the first thing you think about when you hear the name clock is to be the guy who is good at basketball. 
not the guy who limps. Right? Or even the guy who limps and plays ball. So that means I have to work harder to, you know, put in more and show more so the basketball personality overshadows this whole, you know, tag that I'm giving because of the name clock. And that was hard. Because this is high school. Yeah. A million basketball players were good. You know, every tournament you go, they are wild players. So this is what happened. When I realized that it wasn't enough, I had to do more. So I had to do other sports. Volleyball. And I had to show that I could play soccer too. Back in junior high school, I have to be selected to play soccer. When they like, you know. But in high school, I selected people to play soccer. When clock actually became clock, even out of KSTS. Oh, I like this story. There was... We played um, a zonal competition, you know, the Pope Jones, Sectec, New Jabbing, you know, it's like inter schools, inter core, but basketball. And then from that, players will be selected to represent the zone, Koforidia zone, and then from that, to be selected to represent the region. Wow. So we played that competition. My first ever competitive, organized competitive basketball I played. I didn't have a basketball shoe. I was going room to room trying to get a shoe for the next day because it was a big deal for me. I hadn't played organized basketball in my whole life. Like wearing a basketball jersey, you know, Saturday morning, strapped up. I went to see the coach. Our coach was called Sakura. He looked at me some way. I didn't even know I was going to get a jersey. But then I had gone for training. But there were players that might see me. I was in SS1, SS3. Guys were there. One guy didn't show up. So he gave me a jersey to play. I was so thankful. I felt so good about it. I wore my shoes. Did a warm up. I didn't play first game. I didn't play second game. I didn't play that game. <laughs> I warmed the bench. <laughs> we had like two games to go. I didn't play the fourth game. And I went to Sakura. Small boy. I looked after him. I said, please, I want to play. Said, ah, you've not played? No, I've not played. Oh, you play, you play. You play. No, go sit down. You play. I went sit down. Started the last game. It was against Koforidia Technical School, Kotek. Apparently, that was the game for, to qualify to the next stage. So, the game started. First quarter, I didn't play. Second quarter, I didn't play. I'm not sure he even saw me at the bench. So, this senior was called Abebio. Very huge dude. He was a giant. He was subbed. He's tired. He's the star of the team. You know? So, you know, he came, he was coming to sit down and I told him, Abebio, I've not played some. Ah, how have you not played? Went to the coach, told the coach to be for me this boy. Come here, come here, come here. I subbed one guard. My first move, first ever move on that court was to spin around. was tensed. I had never met that crowd in basketball before. Insectech, Insectech, they support you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> they are all over the place. And people know I can play. I mean, they, the boys knew I could play. The first pass got to me. I remember, I was like, what, what am I going to do? Like, <laughs> I was playing to you for a second. And I got the pass and I turned and there was this huge defender in front of me. I just took one dribble and I just spun like that. And 
the whole place was like, whoa. And that was it for me. That was it for me. I stole the day. Ha! It was fun. I didn't make most basket. I gave good passes and I didn't lose the ball. And my name was all over the place after that day. All over the school. Everybody was talking about Clark. Everybody was talking about Clark. Players were selected to represent the, the, the region. Sorry, the zone. Kofredia zone. I wasn't selected. I wasn't pained. I knew it was just the beginning. My play not catch there, you know. And I didn't have so much play time, so. A classmate of mine is called, we called him Imransem. <laughs> One of the smartest dudes I've ever met in my life. I don't know how he does it, but he's naturally smart. I admired him so much. He really admired me. He understand how I did what I did. That evening, after the selection, the next Monday, the players who were selected are supposed to come to KSTS to, you know, to train. That evening, I was going to prep. So we go to dining for we go to prep. So I was wearing my bag, all strapped up for prep. And I met him once I'm upstairs. Like, are you not going for training with them? Like, can I was select the one? How? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I mean, everybody knows they are supposed to be in that team. Imransom asked me to go and change and go. I said, yo, did you hear me? I wasn't selected. My name wasn't mentioned. No, you just go. That's why he just told me to go. Go and change and go. Okay. I went to change. And I went. Najidiyan son had big <laughs> hope that, yo, okay, maybe the coach will... When I got to the, the entrance of the basketball court, I met the coach. He's like, why am I late? Um, actually, I wasn't selected, but I thought I could just come and train with them, you know, so that I can have some. He told me, no, I've been looking for you. Like, oh, wow, okay, I, I didn't know. I've been looking for you, I asked my fools to go and call you, and he, he's telling me you, you are not around. Like, okay, then I'm here. Like, Hurry up, go and start jogging. So, now I'm part of a team. But guess what? This is the part that I like the most, or I hate the most. I was a part of the team. We trained for a long period of time. We went to Ibri Girls, you know, Ibri, for the Zonals competition to represent Kofrigia. I was part of the basketball team. I didn't play any game. I didn't wear a jersey for all the games that were played, but the last one, just the last game. This is how I got the jersey to wear. One player said he hadn't played the whole time, so he's not even going to wear the jersey. So he left, he left the jersey on the bed. I was like, hm, you know, go with me, I go wear some. I just wore the jersey, went with them. I, I, I'm not sure I was going to play. If the team hadn't stretched, you know, at the finals. That was the last game. Our team was doing good. So the, the stretch was good, you know, like I think 15 to 18 points difference. And then the coach wanted everybody to play now. So now called me, sapped. And I went inside. I played like two minutes. Two minutes, 30 seconds tops. All over the place. Ha! <sighs> Every girl, I remember that just so well. Two minutes, 30 seconds tops. I made one basket. I gave three passes. I stole the ball once. That was the end of the game. That's the game for the tournament for me. After the tournament, we had won. There was this closing ceremony. And then I was standing right behind this coach. So apparently, I was the 13th player of a 12-man squad. I wasn't supposed to play. At all. I was not supposed to play. This coach was nicely telling his colleague, imitating my leg, 
explaining to him how happy he is that he allowed me play. And that was the part he had fun. Telling the coach, Okay, Tama, Apachini Bemunu. No, be a shame, say, let me first. Oh, what are you? Nice, you know. Standing right behind him. And he was telling his colleague that he at least wanted to, you know, show that he had the will or the power to include, you know, people like me. I mean, that was cool. That was thoughtful. But that broke me. I didn't like it. I thought I was here because I'm good. Not because you want people to see that you try for somebody. Apache. That's what that's what he called me. Alright. I didn't like it. I just I just didn't like it. That's why I got my number number 13. And then I told myself I wasn't supposed to play. I am the 13th player of a 12-man squad. Now I need to be the number 13 in every 12-man squad I play. And that's the challenge I gave myself. I have to move from being the 13th player of a 12-man squad to the 13th player of the 12-man squad. To the number 13 of the 12-man squad. That's a difference. And that was, that, that was going to take hard work. So then I had to work hard. I did it. I, I still did it. Sport was a big deal for me. It's still a big deal for me. It's a very good way for me to prove that I'm more than my limb. I'm more than what my limb will allow me to do. My coaches played a very big role, you know, in in me as a sports person and as an individual too. When freshmen come to school, he organizes inter-hall freshers games. So that was when I noticed I saw him play for his whole report. And per his um, physique, you know, it's, it's actually difficult to tell when you see him at first sight that, ah, can this guy really perform? But uh, through that um, encounter, through those games, I noticed that he has, he has something in him. His first year in school, um, I was a bit, a bit scared because most often when he played for a while, I had to ask him, are you okay? Especially when people have to push him around, he has to bump into persons. I had to ask whether he was okay. And so I pushed him, I'm good to go. But initially I was scared, but after a while I noticed that, you know, Shai, um, this gentleman is really in for business. Not all my coaches were positive, but not a lot of them were negative. I remember one, one guy who is supposed to be a coach asked me to go find a wheelchair. That was, that was bad. I came to be a part of the team, but it looked like just pick up basketball that they came to play. So I wanted to play. And then I wasn't part of the selection. So I kept asking him if I was going to be allowed to play. If not, I have to get out of here. I asked him once, I asked him twice, and the third time he'd be like, why would you why would you tell me that? Okay, I'm sorry if I'm giving you pressure or worrying you. I don't tell me that. I, mean, I don't know why you would tell me that. And he mentioned it again. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. I went to the sideline. My friend was a part of the team. So at a point, he got tired playing, and he called me to sub him and play. He warned the guy, told him, I mean, making him feel like you've been allowed to play, you are going to allow somebody else to play. Try it and you're off the team. So then that was it. And he was supposed to be a coach for kids. So, for coaches, I've not had 
many experiences of coaches looking down on me so much. But the, this, this, um, these ones that happened was bad for me. And it made me make decisions for myself. My friends, <clears throat> big, big part of my process. It was hard for me to allow people, you know, into my circle because I didn't know why they were there. First of all, I had a feeling y'all don't want to be my friend, you know? I don't know, it was a strange feeling. It was like, you're, you're just doing it because you want to act like you're a good person. Okay, so I'm friends with him, you know? I didn't want that. So I wasn't allowing anybody at all. I mean, in the beginning, I was doing that with Shashé because I wanted to fit in. So everywhere, I don't have to hold my head up my head there. At the point I realized my worth, the, the point I decided to be who I am, accept who I am and be who I am the way I want it, you have to, you have to prove to me that you're not here, you know, just for appearances. My name is Elo Mahel for enough knowing a call forever. Let's keep it that simple. Yeah. The very first time I met Clock was in St. Peter's in Priso. We had a super zonal game at the time. But unfortunately, I was playing handball and he was playing basketball. But after handball, I always go and play on the basketball court. So one afternoon, he came there. And when he came, he said that we should play game to 21. That's what he said. But he wanted to check the ball and I told him no. I don't know him and he doesn't know me, so we will shoot for it. So whoever gets the first shot will check the ball. I mean, if you know Clock very well, he'll definitely win that. I mean, there's no two ways about that. So we shot and he won. But we didn't play for that long. So that day we didn't have any conversation. Fast forward two years later, when Sprite's ball was up and running, my friend in Abusco called me. That should come and play for him. I was in Abusco, I was in the sec at the time, but hey, it's basketball, so. And again, I was eligible to play high school basketball. So I also called Wolf to come and we'll go and play. I mean, we didn't know how far we were going to play the game up to, but we knew we were going to win, definitely. So the finals. And then Sekte came and Clock saw me, but again, he didn't pay attention. He didn't know what damage we were coming to do that day. So we started playing, long story short, the game went two overtimes. No hype, like two overtimes. We played, we played, and by far we had a worthy opponent. But me, AJ, and Wolf, if you know all three of us at the time, you would know we also were playing against. So <laughs> I think the second overtime, the second overtime, Clock ended up calling a timeout himself. Yes, that's what happened. He called a timeout. Because at the time, he had figured out who the problems were. But we already knew he was a problem for his team. So we also had our own strategy of how we're going to encounter them. So we played the first overtime. And then the last second, Clock had the ball. We're leading them by three. From center, he shot the ball and he scored. And that ended the second overtime. So the third one, Yaosechi at the time said they should check the ball first and it was a sudden death situation. Whoever scores the first shot wins the game and the ball is going to their host nation. I mean, me and Wolf, we knew we were not supposed to be there, so we could not argue. We just kept quiet. We just had a plan to counter it. So we did what we did. They came. The plan I called drew up was fantastic, but we had already figured it out. So... The ball was supposed to move around till it gets to him. I played a call personally to make sure he doesn't get a ball. <laughs> if you know me, you know if you don't have to get a ball, you wouldn't get a ball. I called and get a ball. They ran out of patience and somebody threw the ball. And I went back to catch that rebound because everybody was retreating. No, everybody was actually coming towards me because they were eager to score. Wolf went the other way. So I caught the ball, I gave it to Wolf. He waited for all of them to come and settle down. Again, if you know Wolf, you know what I'm talking about. 
He waited for everybody to come. And he shot a three-pointer, and that ended the game. That famous story. Um, KSTS were, were in top form. They were just, they were destroying any team that, you know, come before them. Ibuakwa State College had beaten Pope John. And when we talk about basketball in the Eastern region, the top schools are KSTS and Pope John. So if Ibuakwa State College beats Pope John, then KSTS, you have to be careful. And the boys started asking themselves, ah, when did these boys join Ibuakwa State College? Well, there was no official complaint. There was no official complaint. So we organizers, we were just there enjoying ourselves because the boys were giving us a very good game. And there was a certain wolf who I had seen back in Accra. He played for Kanishi during the community dance. We did something for communities in 2009, 10, 11, 12. So in 2009, community dance, Wood, Wolf played. So when I saw him, ah, this, I've seen him before. I'm like, oh, well, maybe he was a student. During break, he came to play. They beat KSTS. A call cried like a baby. He was inconsolable. And if a call cries in Sectec, that's a struggle. Now everybody in Sectec wanted to beat me and Wolf. And it was bad to the extent that we actually had to run. Right? <laughs> so that day we played against him. I didn't have a conversation with him, interestingly enough. Then we finished high school. I stayed home for a year. Coincidentally, he also did stay home for a year. And we both applied for tech. That's where our actual story began. I call it just a brother to me, like pure, deep down my heart. I don't even need to call him every day to know that when there's a bullet coming, he's going to take it for me. And he doesn't need to even think about it. He knows I'll do that for him. I have some amazing friends, Kwame Akwesi. <laughs> I won't talk about that. Guy. I can't finish. Um, Kwame Ajia um, medical doctor by profession. Former and current teammate of Clock Eko Amwakon. Um, we played together for Kenya FC basketball team from 2012 to 2016 when I competed. Um, and currently we are teammates for Snipers basketball um, team in Kumasi. Um, I'm also the chief marketing officer of Clockwork Brand. The first time I met Clock, um, my brother had just come to school, my younger brother. I just come to school, and they were playing a pickup game at Republic Hall at KNUSD. And my brother called me to come play for them. But I ran late because of class. I had class, so I didn't close early. And by the time I got there, being the impatient boy he is, he had already formed a team. And so I saw him playing basketball with these two boys. Initially, nothing struck me about it. You know, I just thought, okay, I'm going to watch a couple of games, and then I'll get in the game. As I started paying close, closer attention to the game, that's when Clock began to stand out. And I was amazed at how he had control of the game. But just the sheer confidence that he has when the ball is in his hand. And that's the first image I, I got of Clock. Just a supremely confident person. But he straddles that fine line between confidence and being obnoxious. And he does it so well that you can't help but admire it. So that's the first time I met him on a basketball court pickup game at Republic Hall. After the pickup games, um, tryouts came, he came and tried out, and naturally he made the team. And um, two years after he made the team, actually, no, a year after he made the team, I became the captain of the team. So I was in charge of organizing the boys and that's how Paco and I came to be friends. Especially because he never gave me any problems, right? The, uh, typically with boys' teams, 
when you're supposed to organize a training session where the coach is absent, you're supposed to organize a meeting to discuss a game or something, boys will always be late, boys will always have an excuse, so many people are talking, when the drills get hard, boys are slacking off, nobody wants to run the extra sprint, nobody wants to run the extra suicide. But I never had that problem with Paco. Clock was always the, the guy that I could count on to lead by example, to not um, put up any um, resistance to whatever extra activity we had to do as a team to get better. So it's through that our, our bond formed. And we are both very intense people. So it was very naturally, we just gravitated towards, towards each other on the basketball court because we play with the same intensity. And um, that's something that sort of rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. But that's the only way we knew how. And I suppose to sort of solidarity makes it easier to be different. And that's where our bonds are forming, you know, because we had a similar approach to the game. We thought about it the same way. And we have very similar characteristics when it comes to um, our um, approach and love for the game of basketball. Have I ever had to fight somebody for looking down on clock or disrespecting him? On the court, all the time. Sportsmen are have huge egos. It's sort of almost a requirement to be successful at sports. Um, because you, you need this internal drive to get up at 5 a.m., to go jogging, you know, when you play basketball, to go lift weights when you play basketball, to put in the work when there is no ball involved, no girls watching, no medal to be won, no prize money to be won. To put in that work, you sort of need an internal drive. You need an internal barometer keeping you in check. So all sports have an ego. And then here walks in you know, unassuming, looking like an angel and just blows you out the water. And he will not hesitate to let you know, right? He is somebody that can play to fans. He's someone that knows how to put on a show for people. Some of the players thought that he wasn't strong enough, so maybe they'll try to go easy on him, you know. Uh, but but you do that at your own risk, you know, because he's strong. So don't don't get it, don't get it twisted. He's a strong guy. So you know, some people would like, oh come on, man, the guy, the guy is, is, is has issues. So don't don't go close. Okay, he will hit that three, and. I think at Tech, I don't know where he got that from, but because his handles became sicker, he was that show boy they would bring on anytime the game was tough. Just to come and humiliate people and depress people. Just to get people depressed. I can't remember a single tournament that we've played where somebody on the other team didn't, in the very least, get chippy with him. There was one time I remember we were playing report and if a call is scoring, he's scoring. And that day a call was scoring. It was nice. Like, he was all over the place. And that day was terrible for all of us. None of us had our rhythm. And I told him, bro, nobody get rhythm right now. I'd like, Amongst all of us, you are the consistent one. So me, Kwabna, Joke, we go figure one our own thing out. But you, shoot, shoot, shoot. Anybody that catches the ball throws it to a cost. Stop. This guy scored. I mean, I think he made about eight three-pointers in a row. And the next thing I see, somebody just runs and pushes him. That day we stopped playing the game. I mean, if you know me, you know we will stop playing the game. I mean, it became a fight the whole time. The foul wasn't on me. Somebody fouled a call. And you can foul a call. I mean, you can foul a call when I'm not on the court. If there's one thing I've learned knowing Clock is that we, sh we can't define anybody by any disability. The person's willpower, the person's commitment to finding a way is about the only thing that matters. 
Amako came to my attention at a sprite ball competition, I think. And um, you, he's not someone you overlook because he's unusual. In basketball, your, your, your typical person is, if you really think of a basketball player, you think of somebody who's tall, jumping around. And to see somebody who is not of a very large stature, and also with physical challenge, it strikes you immediately. And then what strikes you again later is that he's not there as a quirk. He is there on a competitive basis because he's playing as well as or better than some of the able-bodied persons. So that was unusual, so you could, I couldn't miss that. I must say he is somebody who has overcome a challenge in a way that everybody should admire. Kumasi City Mall in partnership with Sports Brand Powerhouse Clockwork Brand brings you the most exciting basketball event ever in the Guardian City, Kumarika. It's happening tomorrow and on Sunday, 17th and 18th of October, pass through at the Kumasi City Mall, Delhi, 11 a.m. Not 11 a.m., 11 a.m., not through. It's a good day, I got good energy. I've been feeling so great, like I gotta be. So, on my way to the mall. I'm super excited this morning. Um, street ball at the mall. It's happened for four years now. And, um, well, I didn't organize the first one. I wanted to play the first one, but it was three on three, short notice, so I witnessed it. And then the second one I played. I think that was the time I got to meet the mall manager and he didn't want me to win because he didn't like the fact that everybody was saying Clock is going to win and Clock is going to be the MVP. So it was against my every move on the court. That's how we became friends. And well, we didn't win. We went to the finals and Chiefs snatched the trophy. So um, after the tournament, I, we had a quick conversation and he was like, he wants next year to be better. I was like, yeah, I think I, I'm good at organizing tournaments too. So if he wants me to help, you should just give me a call. Loki, I wanted to organize the whole tournament. I just didn't want to help. And then the next year, I got a text message from him that um, streetball is happening again. And he knows that I'm the Kumasi basketball god. I think that's what he said. And then he wants me on board. Like, why not? And then, yeah, I organized the third one, the volume three. Amazing. The only problem was the rain, but it was amazing. Like big, big change. Everything was different. Branding, basketball, everything was different. And then fast forward this year, volume four. I thought it was not gonna happen because of the pandemic. Because Charlie. Scary, scary, but God being so good. Here we are, heading to the mall. But I have organized quite a, a number of tournaments. Quite a lot actually. My first tournament I organized um, was in Republic Hall. Uh, I think I was level 200. We just organized um, a basketball tournament for <clears throat> those on campus to play. It was a big thing because um, I think you know these campus elections and those who want to be president and SRC, blah, blah, blah. So they, they put money for us to organize it and it was a big thing and it was cool. But my first tournament I actually organized and uh, it was quite challenging. Um, the biggest I have been a part of, or I've organized is Swift Host, I think, because um, that is like the whole Ghana, right? every region and blah, blah, blah. And I think Swift Host rub shoulders with um, the street ball at the ball. It's a good day, I got good energy. I've been feeling so great, like I gotta be. And I got a bad chick that's in love with me. Living carefree, I'm bothered by my fatality. And you better be quiet, don't say shit. Ride with the vibe if you're rich or you basic. Keep it 100, can't fuck with no fiction. I'm up in the closet, I'm up on some ape shit. So don't kill my bugs. Don't kill my. Clockwork is a sports brand. Basically, it's a sports brand, like Nike. I like saying like Nike because I've always wanted to own something like Nike, you know, growing up. It's a sports brand that wants to make a big difference in branding, 
in sports branding in the country. I have a bigger dream to go far, you know, outside the country, outside Africa. But basically, now in Ghana, Quokok is a sports brand. The first FIBA DXD tournament in Kumasi was organized by Ghana C. My team, um, my teammates and I won it. Me, um, Kwame Akresi, Kwapna Akresi, and Elom. <laughs> Wild, hungry guys. We won El Padro. And we had to go to Accra to represent, you know, Kumasi. We needed to rep, you know, all guy guy, the basketball and all that. So I told them, yeah, I could make t-shirts. Like, oh, you, you can? Like, yeah. Like, okay, we trust if you can. Yeah, spoil them for me. Yeah. So I had to ask, you know, my friends where screens were made in town. I did some research. I went to town, went to buy paste and all that. Did the design. They liked it. I printed in my room. You know, if you don't care, the room is small. Printed in my room. They liked it. They went to Accra. After school, there was a campus league, like campus basketball, we called a campus rebound. And Snipers was a part of it. So even after school, we, we participated. And I wanted my team to, I had the motivation from the teachers I made for the Snipers, you know, to go and play the three day. So I had, I, I felt my team should have you know, some t-shirt, that warm up t-shirt, even though we should just play with it. And then I made that t-shirt. And I remember Elon was in love with it so much. So I was like, I could do this. I could supply t-shirts, you know, make t-shirts for all these basketball teams. Because then the legit basketball league was running in Kumasi. So I, I, it was just a thought. Thought, okay, maybe just a thought. And then there were plans already, things I was supposed to do after school, so I didn't want anything to. So after we wore it, I'm sure Kwame still has that t-shirt. After we, we wore it and played with it, the boys were all like, oh wow, this is cool, like, I didn't know you could do this and all that. Like, I, was, I felt motivated. Like, I've always wanted to have something like that, you know, have my own brand. Then I thought, okay, how about I merge my art life? Art, you know, part of me, with my sports part of me, and make it the brand. So I went back and I went to see Kutri. I told Kutri, this is what I think I want to do. I remember I was walking with him from Paju outside, inside Paju outside. And I told him this is what I thought. And I had made the tailor make a sample. So I showed it to him. Just straight cuts in and out. I think I still have it. And he was like, yeah, that's a great idea. Coach Regan is an artist. So whatever I need, whatever advice I need, whatever direction I need, if I, he thinks, if I think he can help, I should let him know. That motivation was there. He, he tried for me. That weekend, I went to Accra. I went back home. And I was sleeping on the couch. I was putting all the thoughts together. I was on Google. Now I need a name. You know, like, what? How can I call my brand? I remember I didn't think too much about it because I had clockwork ringing in my head the whole time. You know, because a friend of mine always called me clockwork instead of clock. She was always calling me clockwork. I sometimes stopped her, like, yo, call me clockwork. What is clockwork? She never stopped. Eunice never stopped. She was, she called me clockwork the whole time. I used to call him clockwork all the time. He initially didn't like it. And then one day he hit me up and says, Eunice, I'm about to start a brand and the name is Clockwork. And that is where I, I, I felt I had done something, I had influenced something. Even if it's not the whole business, it's just a little change. The name in itself was good enough for me. At a point in time, it was just him. In the beginnings, it was just him. Printing our shirts, getting business deals, handling everything himself. Calls, printouts, deliveries, it was all clock. And things like that could be a bit overwhelming, but he stuck through it all. He decided that this is what he wanted. 
this is where he's going and this is what he wants to achieve. In the end, he stuck, he stuck to it all. I was there as a friend. I was there as the support system. I was there for him as much as I could be. Himself, clock on his own, he is strong. He is very resilient. He is strong-willed. He is... His mind takes him places. His mind decides on things, and he does it. His mind tells him, do this, and he does it. He doesn't stop till he gets what he wants. I had a dream, I had a vision, I had to go get it. I had a dream, I had a vision, I had to go get it. I had a dream, I had a vision, I had to go get it. I'ma keep chasing dreams, go hard, no quitting. I had a dream, I had a vision, I had to go get it. I had a dream, I had a vision, I had to go get it. I had a dream, I had a vision, I had to go get it. I'ma keep chasing dreams. I want Clockwork to be big. I want to own a league in Africa, specifically Africa. I want to train people in skill development in sports, not just basketball. I want to employ people in graphic design and making jerseys and sewing and have a big community of a factory. To come across an enterprise, an establishment, a venture that is by definition a labor of passion. It, if that's what you're looking for, if you, your internal clock, pun intended, is geared towards identifying passion, purpose, you can't help but be drawn into this enterprise. And so um, we have goals, we have missions, we, we want to be a global brand, we want to provide high quality um, sports apparel um, infused with real creativity um, because first and foremost, Clark is an artist. In everything that he does, the artist in him comes out. And um, Clockwork is sort of the amalgamation of all of that. Um, but what it means to me personally is a labor of passion that I am blessed to be a part of. The Clockwork brand is nothing short of excellence. I think what he has done on the basketball court, he had transferred that, his experiences on the court, into now creating apparels for teams. I've seen the works that yeah, he did one for, for us in December during the African Basketball Festival, I said to him, I, I want you to do something special for us. And what he delivered, the teams loved it. And I've told him, I said, look, uh, as long as we continue to be in this basketball space or this sports you know, um, arena, I will continue to support you. I'm very optimistic that the Clockwork brand, it's going to be very successful. Uh, it's not just going to be limited to just basketball, but I see Premier League teams, I see other, you know, groups coming to him to, you know, uh, work with him because he would de deliver nothing but the best to you, just like he did on the basketball court. I can tell you for a fact, I think I know how far he's taking basketball in Ghana, but the reality is I don't. In 10 years, we'll come back to have another conversation and I'll tell you I thought I knew he was going to do this, but I'm waiting to see what he does in 10 years. 10 years from today, 20 years from today, there'll be the need for another conversation like this to see how far he has come. And even that time, he will still be a work in progress because he's destined for greatness and we'll have to continue to support and celebrate him. Back in high school, before I went to school, I told myself that whichever name I get, I will have to make that name a thing for me, accept it. So I got clock and I made the clock work. I actually did. Yeah.
I've been running all my life. They keep judging all my life, but I'm just trying to live my life. Oh my, oh my, oh my God. I've been running all my life. They keep judging all my life, but I'm just trying to live my life. Y'all keep judging and judging and judging me. Ain't they wanna your cool, be your better me? Y'all wanna send me?